Dr. Shelley, and it's time. It's time for HETV, Health Education Television. Now, of course, this time, as you click the subscribe button, and of course you hit that like, this time our lecture is GI. And GI is big. So right now, I'm just gonna focus on chronic GI, which is just means conditions that people are gonna be living with for a while versus conditions that put them in the hospital and their life and death and oh my god we got to treat it yesterday or something bad's gonna happen this is bad too but they're gonna live with these conditions for a little while or at least they're going to be plagued with symptoms from these conditions for a little while so we're gonna get started but remember what i always say you need your handout so every time you turn on HETV and you go to that playlist and you find the subject that you want you know you still have to have your handouts so for today's lecture here are the handouts you've got your oh my god packet and isn't it true that you need that anyway and be careful because this thing was just revised and as god is my witness you too can get this bad boy for $19.99 the other handout that you need for this GI lecture is the procedures handout. Because remember, GI has a tremendous number of procedures. As a matter of fact, I want to direct your attention to the right page for this. The right page for your GI handout in the procedures packet is going to start with page eight I believe yep you're gonna start with page eight and eight has enteral feedings I don't know if you can see that I think you're doing pretty good okay so you know that's GI procedures and then of course you have two GI packets and that's something that you may have forgotten you have one that looks like this and this is the one we're working in today you also have one that has the the GI system on it that looks like this this is actually the acute GI packet this is the chronic GI packet we're working in this all right now, if you're smart, anytime you turn on HETV, which is our health education television, if you're smart, you know you had to pull out your medication packet, specifically your medication categories and your pharmacology. Now, how do you do your pharmacology? Well, you're taking notes, right? So you open up your pharmacology pink packet, and when I mention a medication or you see all these medications on the board then you're going to take your highlighter and highlight that medication right there on the pharmacology packet know that you got to go to that later when you're in this packet the medication categories this is when i start talking about categories i may say something like aminoglycosides i may say something like ppis as a matter of fact hint hint there are a few meds in that category packet that you gotta be listening to during this lecture. So there's the PPIs, there's antacids, there's H2 inhibitors. They're all gonna be in the medication categories packet. So I hope you're ready, cause we got a lot to do now. I can't keep playing with you in these handouts. I gotta get busy, okay? Now, so we're good. Let's do the easy stuff first, shall we? Let's do glass. Glass is a magical way that I have found I forget where I heard it at, but it's the way I teach you the anatomy. Now, I don't know if you can see that. Certainly, I pray you can see that, but, and I know Larry's got my back, and I'm hoping that as I point to this, it's really, really, really obvious that this is like a cross kind of thing. Because here we go. If you look at this cross, it's me standing here with, a line, if you will, going from my sternum all the way down to my belly button, and then another line, using the belly button as an example, going from the belly button to the flank on either side. Flank, flank, belly button, sternum, pubic bone. I hope you got that. Because what happens with the word glass is that if you remember I'm standing like this, 
not like this in this diagram. I'm actually standing like this. You have to put the letters in each of the four quadrants of the abdomen. Now, this quadrant is right upper quadrant. So what am I saying? It's this part of my body, right upper quadrant. This is the right lower quadrant, left lower quadrant, left upper quadrant, okay? Now, let's put in our letters. Remember the rule, you always start in the right upper quadrant. Sort of like the flow of blood through the heart always starts from right to left. That's just the way it is. So let's do the doggone thing. Right upper quadrant is the gallbladder and the liver. So I took care of these two letters right here. Gallbladder, if you look at the letters, the G is behind the L. How appropriate is that? Because the liver's in the front, the gallbladder's in your back. It literally is an abdominal organ, but it's more behind the liver. So we kind of got to go far to get it, okay? The next one is A, appendix. So that's in your right lower quadrant. I had a young lady in my class who complained and, and was really doubled over sort of with pain on the break one day. We just went to break. I said, okay, y'all, it's time to go to break. She's bent over, hunched over, looking all crazy. I said, what's wrong with you? She said, well, I was at the hospital yesterday. They told me I had fibroids. I said, fibroids? You grabbing your right lower quadrant. Are you sure it's not an appendix? She's like, mm-mm, they told me it was not my appendix. They told me it was fibroids. So then I started thinking like any provider would because I'm a provider first. I said, well, have you ever been told you had fibroids? Nope, and she's like in her 50s. I'm thinking she should have known by now that she had fibroids. So that doesn't make sense because she didn't have fibroids, okay? She's reaching for her right lower quadrant on our break. She's doubled over talking about the hospital diagnosed her yesterday with fibroids i said how did they diagnose you with fibroids what did they do oh they did an ultrasound said everything was okay except i had fibroids i said mm, mm -mm. this is what i need you to do oh and then she said something really scary she said they gave her codeine at the hospital for the pain and i know that codeine is constipating and if you do have appendicitis and you are constipated you're going to rupture that appendix depending on how hard you push so i said to her i said listen Mm -mm. This is what I need you to do. That's an appendix. I'm almost positive about it. I want your girl over here to take you to the hospital now, which is about 10 minutes away if that. And I want you to stay there until they figure out what's going on. She called a little while later and told us she's about to have surgery for a ruptured appendix. Of course she did. So it, it was just like common sense, right? So you're not going to be that nurse. You know that as soon as the person is grabbing their right lower quadrant, it's appendicitis until you prove it ain't. Okay, but that's a cute GI. We're over here in chronic, so let's keep it moving. Now, we got a couple of more letters. We did this one, we did this one, we did this one. We did the G, the L, and the A. We got two more quadrants, two more letters. Let's fill them in, but let's talk about it because it's a little deeper than that. The S here in the left lower quadrant is very important because I tell you to remember shit. I know I got a potty mouth. You knew it too when you paid me. But regardless of that, you better write down what I said because it's going to help you later. Now, okay, if you want to be professional and all that old crazy stuff, let me give it a little something, something so some of y'all who got a little, you know, got a little uptight about my swearing can, can help yourselves out here. Here we go. Sigmoid colon. Now you got to remember that because mm -hmm. it's the sigmoid colon that is right before your rectum and your poop and your anus and all that good stuff. So when we're talking over here, when I say the word colon, remember every time I say colon, that is the large intestine. So there we go. Shit which is over there, because if your kids are constipating, you say, baby, you, you know, your kids come up, mommy, my tummy hurt. Okay, well, point to where it hurts, baby, and they'll be reaching over on the left side more than anything, because little kids get constipated like crazy, especially babies, okay? So there you go, shit, sigmoid, cold. We good. Now we got more to do. 
in the left upper quadrant, we're talking about a stomach. A stomach, the stomach, your stomach, is going to be in the left upper quadrant. And one of the things I did want to tell you, even though stomach being in with an S, I wanted to make sure you knew that every time you saw the word gastro, you said to yourself, oh, that's stomach every time you saw that because people see gastro and they forget that that's a stomach because they don't really talk about stomach when they talk in all this whole highfalutin four dollar words so it's really just gastro equals stomach forevermore every time you hear me say it that's what the heck it is now with the stomach you have another organ that begins with the s in that area of the body it's not a gi organ it's actually a lymphatic organ and so you know that this is the stomach i'm gonna put something else in here so you got it going on we got the stomach for an s and then we're gonna throw a third s in there what the hell this is your spleen back in the day before airbags we used to have car accidents and the most common injury deadly of that is that you ruptured your spleen because your spleen was up here and so was the freaking steering wheel. So now we have airbags. We protected the spleen, but we also know that the airbags come with the little complexities as well, like pneumothorax. That's why you do not put your kids in the front seat until they hit 13 because the airbags will kill them. That's a sad note. That's your pediatrics. You can thank me later. Send me a tip, whatever you want to do. So this is glass. Know your organs. This is your anatomy. Now we got to go to physiology. I'll be back.